Caswell? Oh, no, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Caswell. I beg your pardon. I must have the wrong apartment. I'm looking for Miss Caswell. Are you Mr. Howe? Why, yes, I am. Well, please come in. You're Miss Caswell? Well, that's the name I register under. Actually, it's Casey. Captain Doyle said you'd get in touch with me, Mr. Howe. You're a policewoman? Don't I seem like one? Well, I expected something that looked like a lady wrestler. <laughs> Won't you please sit down? Thank you. I do know judo, if that's any help. I'd never have guessed it. If you had, I'd probably be out of a job. A cigarette? Thank you. Captain Doyle said that you'd be willing to help us with these jewel robberies. Anything I can. I don't want to sound too critical, but after nine holdups in two months, it seems to me something's got to be done. Well, that's just the way it seems to us. That's why I'm here. Good. That's a break for our side. Thanks. My company and other insurance companies have paid out over half a million dollars in claims. So I'm very glad to work along with the police in any way I can. Good. Well, the finger man for the whole organization, that's the man who plans who's going to be robbed and when, we feel has got to be a member of your social circle. Someone I know personally? Well, it has to be someone at these parties who who knows the people very well, what kind of cars they drive, what roads they take home, how much they have to drink, everything. That's the man we're out to get. Kind of hard to accept, but it does make sense. Do you think you could introduce me into your circle? Pass me off as a friend from California, Europe? I'd have to make up a good story, but that shouldn't be too difficult. I may be able to smoke out our man, or at least get a lead. You? Well, don't you think I'd be accepted in society? I think you'd be sensational. The wolf pack would be out in full cry. But apparently these thugs don't play around. If there were some kind of a slip-up and it were found out that you were in the police, wouldn't it, to say the least, be pretty rough on you? To say the least, Mr. Howe. And so the very rich and very social Beverly Caswell of Santa Barbara and the Riviera was launched into society, the diamonds very much in evidence. I had been thoroughly briefed on all the guests. Cleo Simpson, a divorcee with a small alimony and a taste for high living. I eyed her jewels with as much interest as she eyed mine and wondered where the money came to buy them. Horace Jane. Seventy a week in a brokerage house, but lives as if he made ten times that amount. <laughs> Leslie Fortnum, what is known as a club man. He doesn't work, and his means of support are entirely invisible. Mr. Fortnum was as much taken by my diamonds as by my charms. Larry Babson, eight gold polo player impeccable family, discharged from the army for trying to smuggle gold into the country. Hobbies, women, and horses. Only means of support, his wife, Frances Babson, whom he married for her money, but who hardly has enough to keep Larry in the manner to which he's accustomed. But of course, this was a very special party with a very special guest list. Everyone there had been present at every affair after which there had been a holdup. It was one of the fanciest lists of suspects I had ever seen. You're terribly attractive. I think you should know I don't believe in preliminaries. <laughs> well, thank you for the warning. Do you have a light? Yes, I do. <sighs> My last match. You could have had it. 
even if it had been my last dollar. Good night, Frank. Good night, Phil. Excuse me. Forgive me for interrupting, but Larry, dear, we do have a dinner date. Well, oh, I've never had time go so fast. I'll go get my coat. You seem to have caught Larry's eye. He's always at his best when he's attracted to someone. Oh. We were just having a few laughs, nothing more, Mrs. Babson. Oh, Miss Caswell, I'd like you to know that Larry and I have a perfect understanding. After all, we're modern, living in the 20th century, and if he likes to rove a bit, I don't mind him the least as long as he comes back to me. He's a darling, really. He makes me feel young and gay. After all, what more can a woman ask? I like to see him happy, so I hope he's as attractive to you as you obviously are to him. Does my attitude seem strange to you? Yes, frankly, it does. You're very sweet. All set. Oh, do you mind if I give you a word of advice before I leave? No, of course not. Well, I think your necklace is one of the most beautiful I've ever seen, but I do hope you don't make the mistake of wearing it out at night. Don't you agree, Larry? Yes, yes, it's not too good an idea with these hold-ups happening every ten minutes. Well, it's nice of you to worry, but I'll let you in on a little secret. This happens to be an imitation. Not really. Certainly had me fooled. And Larry is something of an expert. His father used to be the head of Antops, the diamond importers. Well, the, um, the class for the original had to be replaced, and some of the diamonds had to be replaced also. So I decided to have this made in Europe. It's a copy. Actually, I'd be quite happy if some hold-up man would come along and take this piece of glass. Then I'd be able to collect from the insurance company, who would never be the wiser. Now, if you happen to know some nice hold-up men, would you tell them that I'm not only ready, but I'll gladly split the insurance money with them? My dear, it's really nothing to joke about. I wasn't exactly joking, Mrs. Babson. Goodbye, Beverly. It's been so nice. Coming, Larry? Good night, Larry. Not for long. I'll call you soon. <laughs> That's over. How do you think it went? You may consider yourself properly launched into the society. Oh. <laughs> I feel like somebody hit me over the head with a champagne bottle. <laughs> but it did help any, specifically on him. There's one thing that interested me most. Larry threw these away. Just a package of matches. Yeah, that's right. But these matches came from Seattle. And one lead we have is that one of the stolen rings, the setting of one of the stolen rings, was found in the pawn shop there. Probably just a coincidence. Probably. Yet there's a possibility that it might not be. Oh, I don't think Larry would be involved in anything like that. You don't, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I think he'd make a very good suspect. He might not only be arranging the holdups, he might be selling the jewelry as well. What? Oh, I'd like to get a look at that Babson apartment when it's empty. You want to search it? Mm-hmm. Can you think of a better place to keep stolen jewelry until you're ready to sell it? Have you ever been in an apartment where you weren't supposed to be and discovery could mean... Well, it could mean a lot of things. None of them good. No matter how tough you think you are, or how much experience you've had, your heart pounds like a kettle drum and the palms of your hands sweat. You've been trained, so you move. And you move fast because you know at best your time is limited. But while you work, you're always listening. You're waiting for the sound. The sound that says, you're caught. I said that there was a girl waiting for me here, but uh, I had no idea that it was you. Larry, I, I, I know it wasn't really quite right, but I, I phoned and phoned. I, I really wanted to see you, and, well, then I just decided to take the bull by the horns. You're pretty impetuous, aren't you? Yes, under certain conditions. Larry, look, let's, uh, let's have a wonderful night on the town, just the two of us. Well, I... Uh... I had a date with Francis to go to the charity ball, but, 
In this case, I like this much better. Much better. I must say that when it came to doing the town, few men did it any more thoroughly than Larry Batson. We covered Manhattan from the high-toned places to the jazz joints. Hot, cool, and progressive. And back again to the celebrity haunts where the drop-dead head waiters are especially. And you naturally run into all your friends like Cleo Simpson, who explained she had just stopped by for a drink after the charity ball before going out to her country place. Oh, such a dismal drive, darling. That night, Larry Babson not only did the town with me, he overdid it. You name it, and we were there. Uptown, downtown, east side, west side, until finally it was five in the morning. And he decided, to my great gratitude, it was time for breakfast. Frank had decided the same thing. Did you hear about Cleo since? She was held up and killed. I just... Oh. Suddenly I remembered. It was right after seeing Cleo that Larry had excused himself to make a phone call. Cleo Simpson made it imperative to get Larry Batson and get him at once. We decided to set a trap, a trap he couldn't resist, lay it out cold for him. So I paid a call on the Babsons. Beverly! I'm delighted you were able to come. Well, I've been wanting to see you, Sam. And are you? You know, I'm awfully fond of you. You're not like the others. The others? Oh, all the other women Larry runs after. I know you'd never do more than flirt with him. I feel that intuitively. I'm feeling very right, Sam. I know that, and I appreciate it. All that talk the other day about being modern and adult, and Larry and me having an understanding. There was just so much talk. Every time Larry starts with another woman, I feel sick and old. I really am. But I can't give him up. It's like a bad disease, isn't it? Apparently, there's no cure. No cure at all. Well. Hello, Larry. I'm surprised. Hello, darling. How are you, Mr. B? Oh, what are you two doing? Sitting here just talking without a drink? How would you like some scotch or rye? No, or... no, thank you. I can't. I've got to go. So early? Yes, I'm going out to the Howe place to a cocktail party. Well, I have to go home, get all prettied up, prod out my beautiful paste necklace. Hope some hold-up man will take advantage of me. Although I've just about given up on that. Beverly, how can you say such a thing after what happened to Cleo Simpson? I know it sounds unfeeling of me, Francis, but you see, Cleo was killed because she was stupid enough to put up a fight. Actually, I wouldn't do any fighting at all. In fact, I'd be so appreciative that I'd give half the insurance money to whomever was kind enough to arrange the hold-up for me. <laughs> you see, Francis, my, uh, my checking account is dangerously low. Well, I can sympathize with that. I know that feeling very well. <laughs> oh, stop that nonsense, both of you. I'm awfully glad you could come, Beverly. Thank you very much. You know, if I had a daughter, I'd like her to be just like you. Well, that's the nicest compliment I've ever gotten. Good night. Bye, Beverly. Good luck tonight. Good luck tonight. Good luck tonight. Before I knew it, it was tonight, and there we were riding along. And I with a glass necklace, the bait, the trap.
trap worked. At least the first part. And the next day I waited for the second part, the important part, to work. The story of the holdup had been given out to the newspapers and how once again the police were baffled and how the insurance company was paying off at once. Now, I was waiting. And the waiting paid off. company really come through with that 40000 as the papers said they did? Uh-huh. They sent over the check at noon today. Now, wasn't that sweet of them? Well, that's the sweetest thing I ever heard of. That calls for a celebration. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to lean over and kiss the hold-up man, but I was afraid he'd think it was rather strange. Well, you go on talking like that, I may consider taking up that kind of work. <laughs> no, thank you. Of course, the man who uh, really deserves to be kissed is the man who arranged everything. In fact, he deserves more than a kiss. He, uh, he deserves part of the insurance money. Well, I can't say how much, but he certainly deserves some of it. <laughs> Don't you agree, Larry? It's possible. All you have to do is say the word, Larry. The word? Or produce that absurd glass necklace. <laughs> you think I'm the man? Well, I'd be disappointed if you weren't. I thought it was rather exciting. <laughs> well, you might be disappointed. I don't think so. Larry? What are you doing? What are you looking for? Does it upset you? There, there's something wrong. What is it? You. You're what's wrong. What do you mean by that? All this talk about a hold-up and trying to implicate me, I don't like it. I don't like that. There are a lot of things I don't like. Finding you in my apartment that day. Well, you know why I was there. No, I don't think I do. That was out of character, Beverly. And your confidences about your jewelry and wanting that insurance money, that was out of character, too. Look, Larry, I don't like the things you're saying or the way you're behaving. Well, isn't that just too bad? You have an interesting object art here. What is it? Goodbye, Miss Caswell. Whatever your name is. I don't know what you had in mind, but it's not going to work. And we won't meet again. Because I'll make a point of it. Come on, Charlie. I'll see headquarters. Well, I certainly blew that one, didn't I? Really, I don't know what to say. Just one of those things, Casey. Oh, it's all my fault. I overplayed it. I was too confident. I... Believe me, Captain, I never messed up one like this before. Part of the game, I guess. Well, now that he knows we're suspicious, we're never going to have a chance of getting him. Won't be easy. You can uh, take your time getting out of here. I got a report down to headquarters. I'll have the equipment picked up tomorrow. I'll be down as soon as I pack. Oh, Hardy, you might as well enjoy the room. The room is paid for for the day. <laughs> yeah, well, as soon as I get out of here, the better I'm going to like. Yeah, I know what you mean. So long, Casey. So long.
Larry was just here, wasn't he? Larry? Don't try to lie. I always know where he goes. Well, he... Yes, he did stop by. Stop by? Oh, you must have laughed the other day when I said I was sure you weren't like the others. You and Larry must have enjoyed that little joke together. Now, Francis, that's not true. Oh, don't make yourself more disgusting by lying. You're very upset, aren't you? Yes, I'm upset. Because I know the truth. And I hate him for it. And I hate you for it. I think I hate you more than I do him. You posed as a decent girl. My friend. But I am your friend. I'd like to kill you. That's what I'd like to do, kill you. Francis, listen to me. There's never been anything between your husband and myself. Stop your lying. Well, look, Francis, get a hold of yourself. <laughs> what do you think I have in here, a revolver? I wish it were. I've sunk far lower than that for Larry. No, this is what I have. Where did you get this? I, um, did the little favor you asked for. I arranged for the holdup. You arranged it? With Larry? Oh, no. Larry knows nothing about any of this. Larry has standards. He wouldn't take a penny of my money if he knew it was stolen. But, but how? Why? After he went through all my money, I had to get some more somehow in order to keep him. My chauffeur knew some men. It was really quite simple. Francis, I feel very sorry for you. Very sorry. I don't want your pity. You're no more honest than I am. Just pay me half that $40,000 you got for the necklace. If you don't, I'll see to the insurance company finds out about you. Well, am I going to get paid? You're going to get paid, Francis. When? Don't you take them down yourself, Miss Caswell. You've got all that extra muscle. What? Oh, Frank, I didn't expect to see you. Did you hear about the case? Yes, I heard everything. Congratulations. Huh. I thought a celebration dinner might be in order. Well, Frank, I don't know. You know, there isn't any more Beverly Caswell. There's just Casey Jones, the policewoman. Well, that's fine with me. My relationship with Miss Caswell is professional. And if you have no objections, my relationship with Miss Jones will be strictly personal. <laughs> well, now that I think about it, I, um, I have no objections at all. <laughs> Miss Jones? Mr. Howe? 